Hello viewers and learners of the Postgraduate Diploma in Environmental and Occupational Health. The module for discussion is Effects of Toxicity. I introduce myself as Dr. Sushmita Vaska from the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies, Indra Gandhi National Open University. The learning objectives of this module will be to understand the different types of toxicants and the effects that these toxicants or the toxic substances have on our body. We will explain all this with the help of certain case studies and we will also see what are the terminologies and definitions of like for example the chronic toxicity, acute toxicity and so on. Environmental pollution. There has been serious problems in the developing countries which are affecting the lives of billions. So you will see that either the air is polluted or the soil is polluted and also the surface as well as the groundwater. These are all being contaminated with from several sources. It could be from the agricultural field where uh, excess of fertilizers or the pesticides are being applied and then that can actually uh, run into these uh, river and the water systems. So thereby billions of people who are drinking the water, they will get affected with and then they are affected with lot of health issues. The World Health Organization, they have estimated that 25% of all the deaths, these can be attributed to the environmental factors alone. Now there are several industrial areas. So the Central Pollution Control Board in India, they have developed the Comprehensive Environmental Pollution Index in the year 2009. Now in this, 88 of them were identified as polluted industrial sectors. So that means these industrial sectors are severely polluted from several sources from the industrial uh, sectors. And in 2016, this became uh, up to 100 industrial clusters. Mostly, if we see, these are uh, centered around Gajrauli and uh, the Sanganer, the Hazaribagh districts, Morbi, Tutikorin and also Mandideep districts. So, these are all critically polluted. So, is there absence of inadequate action to reduce these pollution aspects? And finally, what do we see? We get to see damaged landscapes. Unless these industries around, in and around Delhi, they dump the coal for cleaner fuels, the air quality is not going to improve. In 1990, the Supreme Court gave a directive to switch to the uh, compressed natural gas, that is by April 2001. And then, now again we see that coal is still being used and there are a lot of the thermal power plants. So who is to blame? The pollution hotspots, mostly if you see seven major industrial districts of the Delhi and the NCR, there is a national capital region. In this, we find Ghaziabad, Sonipat, uh, Panipat, Faridabad, Gurugram, Alwar, and also Bhivadi. So, here these are all the pollution hotspots, and from there, the uh, Delhi NCT, there is a national capital territory, is also getting damaged with the pollution uh, aspects. Now, particulate matter. Now, if we talk about particulate matter, we have the particulate matter 10 and also the 2.5. That is according to the size of these particulate matter and how it is easily entering the lungs and you can have a lot of the respiratory ailments. So, this particulate 10 emissions, if we find 2% in Delhi National Capital Territory region, but 28% in the National Capital uh, region, NCR region. So, this is really alarming. Now, in this table, which uh, the source is taken from the Center for Science and Environment, the Down to Earth from the year 2021, you can see all the polluting uh, districts, that is the seven major industrial districts uh, of the Delhi NCR and you can see the major fuel, you know, are they using coal, are they using uh, uh, wood or any other source, you can see the source also being used and the amount of the uh, emissions that are being uh, let into the environment, whether it is ranging from 30 to uh, 50 or even 60 percent in certain regions. So, are there any solutions for these pollution problems? So, subsidies on natural gas, they need to be brought in for the industrial sectors. Industries in the Taj trapezium zone, they are providing, they are being provided the subsidies on the gas price due to the court's order. So, such models, we need such good model for providing the clean air and also bluer skies. Coal. 
so we had already discussed in the introduction to environmental toxicology that the coal contains mercury and mercury is highly toxic in nature so singrauli is a powerhouse of india and this has massive coal reserves and many of the thermal power plants so mercury is one of the natural and the most harmful components that are found in coal and during combustion that is at temperatures above 1100 degrees it vaporizes so this large quantities of coal they are burnt in the thermal power plants and considerable amount of the mercury is released into the atmosphere so here we find that people are complaining of unexplained ailments they have uh, the uh, skin you know you can see in this figure where the lady has a lot of uh, melanin depigmentation then they have chronic kidney failure they are having certain other skin and other uh, toxic ailments to their organs so the center for science and environment has reported that mercury which is a deadly toxin in coal this is slowly entering the people's homes their food water and even their blood even when the blood has been analyzed you know by the uh, different agencies we will see that the amount of the mercury contained was also very high more than the uh, the permissible limit even that is contained in the waters so therefore mercury is very toxic and this has severely contaminated the land water air and the food chain throughout india so this is reaching alarming levels due to the discharge of the mercury bearing industrial effluents and that is ranging from 0.058 to 0.68 mg per liter this is several times more than the prescribed indian and world health organization standards of 0.001 mg per liter for drinking water and 0.01 mg per liter for the industrial effluents so even when the uh, csc analyzed the blood of the people who are residing there even that contained mercury even their hair their nails all this contained mercury in alarming concentrations so therefore mercury is poisonous in all forms whether it is inorganic it is organic or elemental methyl mercury this is a neurotoxicant as it can uh, damage the developing brain Uh, it is a teratogen it can damage the fetal or it can cross the uh, blood brain barrier as well as the placental barrier and it can damage the fetal brain and entire neurotoxicity can happen it can also trigger depression and suicidal tendencies paralysis kidney failure alzheimer's disease speech and vision impairment allergies and also hypospermia therefore mercury is carcinogenic that is it is cancer causing agent even a minuscule increases in the methyl mercury exposures that can adversely affect the cardiovascular system this is reported by the united nations environmental protection agency the global mercury assessment report the uh, unep program and it is also a possible carcinogen for the humans according to the international agency for research on cancer toxicity therefore there are many factors that play a potential role in toxicity and in the effects of the toxic agents the dosage and exposure is an important factor and toxicity occurs from adverse cellular biochemical and also macromolecular changes so many of the chemicals they can affect the specific target organs and the target organs that are affected this vary on the dosage and also on the route of exposure chemicals can cause different types of toxicity so some can act locally when there is direct exposure and that can trigger the skin or the eye irritation in mostly whenever you go to an uh, industry you know there could be some kind of a uh, the uh, chemical agents or some radiations and this will instantly give you some kind of a skin irritation or even eye irritation dermatitis and also it may be respiratory symptoms whereas other agents can also cause systemic effects in the body in sites remote from where the actual exposure has actually occurred now this is a flow chart showing the mode of action of the toxicants so the mode of action it can occur at the cellular level at the molecular level and at the organ level it depends on the several factors these factors include the uptake of the toxic substance distribution of the substance in the human body metabolism everybody's metabolism is different so the metabolic activity is also a factor the mode of action 
and excretion that how mode of action includes whether the toxicant is being stored whether it is being bio transformed into some other element and then it is detoxified and de uh, eliminated from the body through the excretory roots so here you will see the exposure to the toxicant can be by inhaling the toxic substance it could be through the skin when you even apply anything the skin is also a big uh, one of the biggest organs and that absorption is one of the main sites where the uptake can occur ingestion through food or through uh, liquid when you intake something that is also a form of uptake of the toxic substance then after that it could be absorbed into the bloodstream and it can be distributed to the various body tissues and also to the various organs after that either that substance can be uh, stored and then it could be uh, excreted uh, sometimes or the stored root can also be metabolized and then it can also cause toxicity and the uh, the cycle can go on or it can also be bio, bio transformed into a non toxic substance and then be also eliminated from the system so the metabolic activity of a person the immune system of a person all these are very important factors because something which is allergic or toxic to one person may not be allergic or toxic to another so these are several factors now the chemicals themselves they may be toxic they may require metabolism before they cause some kind of toxicity because in the case of cancer causing substances we have something called as pro carcinogens and then the carcinogens so some substances require some kind of activation in the body before they can become cancerous or you know metabolically active to create and to bring about the toxicity or the toxic effects they can cause damage leading to fibrosis especially in the lungs as the body attempts to repair the toxicity they can damage and disrupt the enzyme system also disrupt protein synthesis they can form reactive chemicals in the cells they can cause changes in hormones they can produce dna damage and or epigenetic changes some chemicals can perform their function indirectly how by modifying the important biochemical functions they can interfere with nutrition they can alter a physiological mechanisms therefore the chemicals can affect organisms by different mechanisms and basically at the molecular level so here you see the chemical can bring about a change in the dna it can even alter the bases in the dna can code for a different totally a different protein and bring about and alter the entire biochemical functions toxic effects so the toxic effects are categorized according to the site of action sometimes it can occur at one site which is termed as a specific target organ or it can also occur at multiple sites where it is called as systemic toxicity so here in this flow chart you see that for example one chemical and let us say that that chemical is toxic it can have its toxic effect on two of the organs on the excretory system on the kidneys on the urinary bladder the urethra the entire kidneys or the excretory system and it can also have the toxicity on the brain the cerebellum you know the cerebrum the entire nervous system so it could be nephrotoxic as well as neurotoxic in nature for example mercury and lead systemic toxicity so here the toxic effects are due to absorption and distribution of a toxicant to a site distant from its entry point systemic toxicants are examples of potassium cyanide where it can affect each cell and organ and it can cause entire damage to the body classes of systemic toxicity in this we can have acute sub chronic toxicity chronic toxicity carcinogenicity developmental toxicity and genetic toxicity one example of the acute toxicity is a bhopal gas tragedy which occurred in 1984 in madhya pradesh in india and uh, here people were exposed to methyl isocyanate which was released from the union carbide india limited ucil pesticide plant in bhopal so here they uh, there was uh, a faulty operation and the uh, uh, the, the gas uh, leak actually occurred and so many people were affected with the gas emissions from here and uh, 20 years later also the children that who were born had the radiation effects 
that they had teratogenic abnormalities the children born were not very normal they had mental retardation and so on so the genetic defects of these uh, radiation and these effects were actually seen in the, uh, the the pesticide effects and you know the chemical toxic effects were actually seen in the children who were born so then later on the government uh, brought about you know certain compensation and so on and uh, this is a classic example of acute toxicity due to certain chemical substances and also uh, radiations subchronic toxicity results are from the repeated exposure for several weeks and months and this is seen in the humans who are exposed to some pharmaceuticals and related chemicals for example ingestion of warfarin uh, tablets these are actually used as the blood thinners they are used for several weeks as a treatment for venous thrombosis which results in internal bleeding the workplace exposure that can also uh, to lead for the several weeks that can also result in the uh, toxicity and subchronic toxicity chronic toxicity these are normally observed in the industrial workers so it takes months and years to become an identifiable clinical disease chronic kidney disease in the workers when they are exposed to lead for several years so, and also the uh, mining in the coal mining they develop the pulmonary fibrosis this is also referred to as a black lung disease in this uh, figure you can see the coal and you can see the lungs which are affected which is uh, the coal miners lung or referred to as the black lung disease this is often uh, it looks like the chronic bronchitic patients uh, which is seen in the long term smokers their lung also appears in the same fashion developmental toxicity that is toxicity which is occurring to the developing fetus so these are adverse toxic effects to the developing embryo or the fetus due to toxicant exposure by the uh, uh, pregnant mothers and it is defined as any structural or functional alteration reversible or irreversible which interferes with homeostasis that is a normal balance uh, and regulation in the body which interferes with the normal growth differentiation development or behavior caused by several toxicants so here you will see the chemical toxicity caused by lead and the mercury that can bring about developmental toxicity and its effects on the unborn uh, fetus teratogens so there are several teratogens which are causing developmental toxicity from the embryonic stage to the birth of a child for example alcohol certain therapeutic drugs drugs of abuse radiations and in fact like when we talk about radiation even those radiations that come from the uh, eclipse from the solar eclipse or the lunar eclipse and when that can also be harmful to the uh, women who are pregnant so that is why in olden days and even now i mean those who believe when there is an eclipse the uh, the the ladies who are pregnant or with a child they always tell them to remain indoors and not expose themselves to those radiation because that can have a teratogenic effect and it can cause developmental toxicity so radiations are really high in the same way those who are smoking you know cigarettes then those who are the hormones which can be given you know some of them are given hormones then uh, the german measles that is why for there is a vaccine which is given for the german measles so that that is a preventive uh, mechanism so that the fetus is protected from those effects and again there are also several heavy metals in the same way drugs of therapeutic use like the tetracycline an anti cancer drug because when tetracycline is given you will see that the children born will have yellow teeth the teeth will be totally yellow in color uh the same way thalidomide which is actually it was given for the ladies long back uh, you know uh, uh, 10 to 15 years back where those who had the morning sickness uh, they had to get over that and for the several uh, severe headache and other kind of the uh, problems you know uh, nauseating sicknesses so they were given these tablets there again you know that also can cause developmental toxicity genetic toxicity this is resulting from dna damage and they can alter the genetic expression it can also be referred to as mutagenesis the genetic change is known as mutation the agents who are responsible for causing genetic toxicity is called a mutagen the toxic effects can be via gene mutation chromosomal aberrations aneuploidy or polyploidy 
and the mutation can occur in a germ cell and also in a somatic cell. Chromium, cadmium, arsenic and nickel all are potent genetic toxicity agents. Organ specific toxicity for example benzene this can target the blood cells blood forming tissues. So the organ toxins can affect specific tissues and organs even lead it can target the central nervous system kidney and the entire hematopoietic or the blood and the cardiovascular system. Bone toxicity that is radium. Now there was a classic case study which I would like to give the the these are all they are also known as the radium girls. They painted the luminous radium paint on watches on clocks and aeronautical dials that will glow brightly in the dark. You have seen that even now you get these watches we, which have those fluorescent or phosphorescent you know luminous radium paint and uh, when you are sitting in a, a theatre or in a dark room then that will actually glow brightly whenever you want to see the time or anything else on your uh, watch. So radium which is used that is hazardous uh, and in 1925 Harrison Martland she discovered that radium was deposited in these uh, the radium girls in their women's bones and uh, they had this bone toxicity and this was a serious issue for these uh, women who are working in such industries. Neurotoxicity this is those agents which cause damage to the cells of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Here again the toxicants can bring about neuroaxonopathies, axonopathies, neuronopathies, the demyelination, interference with the neurotransmission, Parkinson's disease and the mercury where again the environmental agents, the pesticides, heavy metals can all uh, bring about neurotoxicity and are potent neurotoxins. Domoic acid in the blue muscle. Several people were affected in 1987 by consuming the blue muscles which were contaminated with domoic acid and this was following an algal bloom which was noted near Prince Edward Island in Canada. So they had dizziness, seizures and also memory loss. So this domoic acid, how is this produced? It was a primary neurotoxin in mitilus edulis that caused poisoning in the humans and that causes amnesic shellfish poisoning. Further research showed that the algae, you can see in this figure, the algae that is a Nitschia pungens, that was the source of this toxin. So that means the toxins can be bioconcentrated in certain fishes, in certain uh, shellfish and the mussels. So we should be very careful in the food choice that we make because they can be the host, they can be the places where they harbor such kind of neurotoxins. Reproductive toxicity. This involves a damage to either of the male or the female reproductive system, vinyl chloride that can cause spontaneous abortion in the fetus whose spouse is exposed to this compound. Cancer drugs can cause the same problem. Ionizing radiations are also spermatotoxic. So therefore, if we uh, can conclude this module, there are a lot of toxic effects of chemicals and also of the radiations and radioactive uh, agents. Systemic and organ toxicity we have discussed where several agents can bring about both systemic or a specific organ toxicity. Therefore, protection is involving uh, prevention, awareness to the chemical exposures in your workplace, in the industrial sectors and also on a day-to-day -day basis on the kind of food that we uh, eat, the food choices that we make. Your workplace can also be uh, the uh, place you know where you can actually get such kind of occupational hazards and you could become uh, vulnerable to such kind of toxic effects. Agricultural practices, it is better to go for locally sourced food and those which are organic and free. And sometimes if you have a small garden or if you have pots, you can even grow your own plant sources, for example, the greens. In the same way, the best waste management practices are also important for ensuring uh, minimum toxicity to the planet and also to us. Hope you have had a good understanding of this module. Thank you.